So hey guys, this session is on website advanced or website advanced functionality. Uh, we're gonna go through several unique topics today that we haven't really covered in other sessions. Uh, so real estate information is gonna be number one. Lead generation buttons on the site is number two. We're also gonna talk about the newsletter and analytics on your site also. So it could be anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes, just depends on how quickly we go through it. Might be a little bit sh um, shorter than that, and if that's the case, awesome. So let's get started. Now, what we're gonna begin with is real estate info. So we're gonna open up a new tab, and I'm gonna go to the Bothell site. And the reason why is this is a good site with a lot of examples of the first way you can put real estate information on the site, and that is called featured listings. Now, featured listings are found uh, actually on the homepage. You can see two of them here. Uh, they're also found on the real estate profile page, so the page that's dedicated to you as that site sponsor. If we scroll a little bit further down, you'll see them at the bottom of this page. You'll see three of them down here. So those two we've already seen, plus that uh, extra one we have not yet seen. Okay, so we see these on the homepage, we see these on the real estate profile page but we also see them on the featured listings drop-down menu. Now this will only be present on a site which has uploaded featured listings, uh, and I'll go into how you can do that later. But if we click on this, you can see that there is a page really dedicated to all the listings that Judy has highlighted. Okay, so homepage, real estate profile page, and on your site under that featured listings tab, they're also found in the newsletter, We'll talk about that a little bit later on. So these are great to put on your site. And it's one of three different ways to highlight real estate info. Now, if anyone were to click on one of these, they'd see an individual listing uh, view for this one uh, listing itself. So you can see you've got some photos, a space for a uh, video, a map. People can contact you about that listing. They can also see a description about the property as well as uh, sort of any information that relates to it. Now. With featured listings, these are ones that are not automated. These are added onto the site manually or just by putting in the information yourself. Now, a lot of people think, oh, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to spend time putting listings on the site? And I mean, the quick answer is that you don't have to. Uh, but as you can see, they're found on so many different areas of the sites. And it also gives you an extra uh, post on social media as you can share it using these buttons here. Now, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to actually add these in. So if we go to the control panel, and we navigate down to one of two different spaces, we can click on listings here on the right, or we can click listings down here at the bottom. They both go to the same place, but that is where you can add on featured listings. So you can see that Lisa's actually uploaded several of them already, but you can upload your own by clicking on add listing over here and filling out the information. Now, everything that you see under basic info, these are required fields. You must fill these out, such as the address and the MLS number. You need to have those things in there. You'd also wanna put in the area. Quick little tip is that you can put it on an individual area, but that would only put it on that site. So Judy here has Washington and St. John's as her sites. Not Judy, sorry, Lisa here has Washington and St. John's as her sites. If you wanted it on both of them, you'd have to click on all neighborhoods. Okay, so rule of thumb, pretty much click on that one unless you're specifically wanting to highlight it on only one site. Brokerage, I'm sure you'll be able to fill that one out. Same with listing agent, price, listing type, pretty simple and status is pretty straightforward as well. So you can fill these fields out here and include an image too. So quite a few little uh, sort of fields you can fill out that are required info. But at the, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's not really gonna take too much time to get this done. Now, there are other fields that you can fill out, such as images and video, description, property info, additional info, et cetera. The way to do this is to simply click on one of them and it actually expands it out. So you can see with images and video, it has or it gives you the option to add up your own images into this space or even put a link in there for a video URL. Description is pretty straightforward. You put in details about the property, property info, additional info, you guys get the point. You fill these fields out if you're wanting to add in those featured listings. These are all optional fields down here. The only required ones are in basic info. 
Now, once you have filled this information out, you click add. And when you do that, it will add the listing into this little database here. You can see that Lisa has added in eight of them. So you can see those eight down here. Now you can edit them, you can view them, and you can delete them if you really want to. Okay, you can also choose which two you'd like to promote as those main two listings on your home page. Now you've also got another search sort of section here, which allows you to search for a listing by a specific MLS number. Okay, now this is only going to search uh, that listing or the listings that you've uploaded yourself. Okay, I commonly get a question of, so if I type in the MLS number, it's just going to pop up. The answer to that question is no, it's not just going to pop up. Uh, it'll only show the ones you've already added in there. Okay, so if you haven't added in the listing yet, you type in the number, that's why it's not going to be there. Okay, so those featured listings really, really worthwhile to add on. Okay, now I'm going to grab a Help Center article from the Help Center, but instead of just putting into the chat box, I'm going to show you where to access this. You can navigate down to where it says support and click on the little icon that says Help Center on the right side of the page. Now that will give you the ability to actually access our help center and all the resources that are in there. So you click on help center here. And what happens is that you'll be given the all sorts of options for what you can search through, or you can even just type it in here. So if you type in featured listing, you're going to see that there's an article here in the chat, uh, sorry, in the um, help center, which is that step-by-step -step guide of how you can add those into the site. So it's really just covers the same bits of information. Uh, so for those that are on the session live, I'm going to put this into the chat box. But like I said at the beginning, I will be recording this one. So if you are wanting to check it out as a recording, just follow those steps of going into support, help center, and then type in what you're looking for. Cool. Now, the next aspect of real estate information that I want to get into are really the other two options. I said before that there are three options for real estate information. Let's look at option two and three. Now option two and three are kind of dependent on your area, okay? So one option is available for only clients in the United States, whereas the other option is available for everyone. So let's get into the one that's available for everyone first. So we're gonna to go to a website called Klein. Uh, this is sponsored by Diane Moss. And what you can see on this page, once it's loaded through, is a bunch of information as it relates to real estate. Um, but it's kind of not on the Park Ranch site. What you're looking at right here in this space is a listings search feature. Okay, this is accessed by navigating to real estate and click on search listings. And what you can see here is a bit of a breakdown of a separate website. It's not actually the park bench site you're seeing in the middle here. This is a separate website. This is Diane's Better Homes and Gardens Gary Green website. Okay. So what this is called is an embeddable IDX. Okay. An embeddable IDX. So the way that this works here is that if you're wanting to have this added in to your park bench sites, the way to do that is by simply letting our support team know the link to your website outside of park bench that has an embeddable IDX. Okay, so this website in the middle here, Gary Green, Better Homes and Gardens, Diane Moss Realtor, this one here is a separate website that Diane has. But we can put it into your park bench site. So it looks like this. But in order to do that, it has to have what's called an embeddable IDX. So the simplest way to do that is to go down to this little blue guy in the bottom right corner and send a message to our support team. And you write something like this. Hey, my name is, and then you put your name in. I am the sponsor of, and then you put the site in. And then you basically say, I was wanting to add this website in as a search listings feature. And then you put in site URL. So this is the one that's separate from Parkridge. And our support team can go and investigate that for you. If it is a website that does not have an embeddable IDX, unfortunately, we will not be able to add that in. Um, but if it does have one, we should be able to add that in without too many issues. Okay. 
So that's option number two. You can use this in conjunction with featured listings. So you can do this one and featured listings as well, which is great. Or if you don't have a website with an IDX and you are in the United States, you can use option number three. Now, option number three is available for all of our clients, like I said, that are in the USA, okay? And the way that it works is that if we go to this website here and click on search listings, what we'll see here is a search listings feature that has been added on to Lisa's site, but it doesn't look like the last one. It doesn't look like it's been pulled from a separate website. This one is instead one which is actually built into the Parkrange site, kind of. Now, the way that this one works is that we aggregate listing information from an external source called ListHub. Now, ListHub is a massively popular source for listings information across all of uh, the United States. And so we have an agreement with them which allows uh, us to have information that they send us about listings uh, and put it onto the site. And it turns it into this little view here. So you can see listings with red circles on the right and then properties on the left. You can click on these listings to actually look at them as well. So if you wanted to look at this property, you just click on it and it'll show you some photos at the top. But further down, you'll actually be able to see more about the property itself and inquire about it, etc. Okay, so that's, that's option number three. Now, the thing with this option here is that as the information comes from an external source, it comes from ListHub, we can't actually change any of the info. So if you wanted to change any of this information here, we unfortunately couldn't change that. Now, the other thing as well is that say you wanted to increase the number of listings that are populated onto your site. Unfortunately, we can't change that number because we're basically putting up whatever information ListHub is sending us. So some people like this, some people don't really like this so much. That's why we give you three options. So a good little summary is actually on our help center. Okay. So on our help center, we have just kind of a short little breakdown of the three different options. Manually added or featured listings, which we talked about at the beginning. List hub search, which we just got into. And the IDX uh, search as well. So you can choose two of these ones here. You can choose the featured listings option, so this one at the top, and List Hub, or you can choose the featured listing option and the IDX. You can't have the IDX and List Hub at the same time because they actually override each other on the same area of the site, so it only allows one of them. Uh, but for more information, feel free to give us a little bit of a reach out. You can give us a call, you can reach out to us on live chat, and you can also email us as well, just saying, hey, which one do you think is going to be best for me? And don't worry, it's one of those things that say you choose List Hub, you turn it on, you don't like it, you can always turn it off and we can put that IDX on later on if that's an option that's available to you. Okay. So that's kind of a little bit about listings that I wanted to get into today. For those that are watching the session live, feel free to fire away any questions, queries, thoughts uh, that you had about this into the chat box. I'd be more than happy to, to address any questions that you've got here. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the lead generation buttons and kind of your CRM on your site next. Okay, so let me know if you guys got any questions about what we've covered so far. For those that are watching live, for those that will be watching this in the future as a recording, we'll move on in about uh, 60 seconds or so. Okay, but let me know if you guys got any questions. All I ask for those that are on live is just to say, nope, no questions if you are good to go. Um, so that way we can move on a little bit sooner. Okay, so let me know guys, otherwise we'll move on in about 30, 40 seconds. Josely's good to go, awesome. So let me know, Chris, Dave, Heber, Martha, let me know if you guys have any questions. Chris is good to go as well. Otherwise, we'll move on about 20 seconds or so. I'm good. Good to go. Awesome. 
I think oh. I'm good. I, I've got to find out if I've got uh, IDX on my. Is there any way to tell by looking at the site, or do I have to call the tech guys? Um, you, what I'd probably recommend is actually reaching out to our support team first and just saying, hey, can I have this added on? Because worst case scenario, they say, unfortunately, it doesn't have one. Uh, and then that way, you know, <laughs> um, okay. rather than having to go down all these extra routes of finding out, then getting it connected, just go straight to our support team and give us the link. And uh, we'll let you know if we can add that or not. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So let's move on to the next topic. And that's going to be lead generation buttons. Now on your site, there are several lead generation buttons. They're found over here on the right side of the page more often than not. Now, what you're gonna see here is two sections. One is business owners, one is homeowners. So we'll start with business owners. Business owners can request to be interviewed by clicking on this and simply filling out their information. Super easy, name, position, business name, email address, phone number, and then they click contact me. Now, when someone submits their information here, you'll be notified via email, okay? And you'll get an email that says, hey, you've got a new Park Bench lead. Uh, it'll either have the contact information in that email or it will uh, basically have the information stored in your CRM, which I'm gonna get onto shortly, okay? So that's the first one, requesting to be interviewed. You've also got one which says, add your business. Now this one doesn't necessarily capture the lead, but it's a way that business owners can actually add themselves into the site. So they click on this and they can fill out any information about their business and take ownership of that profile page. Okay, so a few different options uh, there for what you can kind of do. Now, that's kind of simple stuff. Feel free to play around with that yourself, but I wanna to touch base on the homeowner section because there's a little bit more to the homeowner section. Now the homeowner section, is where someone could actually submit any information that they may have or, or wants to have about real estate. So someone could click on market report. Now when they do this, they can find out about recently sold properties. They could put their name, their email address, their phone number in there. They can put in when they want to move and then click find out now. Now when this occurs, what happens is that you are notified saying that this person is interested in finding out more, here's their information. And then at that point, you can go and provide your expert opinion of what the data is in your community. We are not gonna be sending them through any recently sold reports or market reports or anything like that, just because we aren't the experts in your area. And I'd hate for us to send them information that was wrong, because that would really mess things up. That would really stunt that relationship. Okay, so that's a really, really important, that market report section. Now, the one over here on the, on the right, the home worth section is very similar. When someone clicks on home worth, they just have to put their address in. So say I was putting in Park Branch HQ, 100 University Avenue, then clicked get my value. They'd put in a bit more information, but they can actually see they've got a Google map track address over here. So if they live in Colorado and it's coming up as Toronto in Canada, they've probably put the wrong address in but at least they can see that over to the right. Now they can put their bedrooms, bathroom, size of the property, contact information, et cetera, and click get my home value. Again, we are not going to send them a home valuation. We are going to connect them with you by sending you their contact information. And then you can provide them, obviously, your expert opinion on that. Because at the end of the day, we all know that not all bedrooms are, oh, sorry, not all properties are valued the same. One three bedroom property is going to be a little bit different than the next three bedroom property. So that's why we connect them to you or we send their contact information to you. Now, if you ever lose this contact information or you delete the email accidentally, what you can do is log into your site and you can scroll down to the tab that says CRM. Now this is a relatively new feature, but basically this is going to store all the things that have come through the site, like requests for interviews, home valuations, marker reports, things like that. And you'll see the contact information that they've submitted. So that way, if you ever lose that info, you can find it under CRM. Now you can see there's a fair few on this one, um, but as you scroll down towards the bottom of this, you've also got ones where you can actually see previous interviews you've done. And it says interview has a little tick and has their contact info. So if you ever need to follow up with them, you've got their contact information there uh, as it was before. Okay. So quite a cool little uh, section there for you to be using. 
Now, what you probably noticed is that on this, there's a little tab that says subscription and it gives the person the option to be invited. Now, this is a new topic. This is in reference to the newsletter. Now, for those of you that haven't seen a Parkrange newsletter before, it's actually built in to uh, every single website, okay? Now, the way that it works, the way to easily find this, if you're not subscribed to your own yourself, is to go to your homepage, so parkbench.com forward slash your area, and then type in forward slash newsletter. This is actually a URL which will take you to your newsletter for that upcoming week, okay, or that previous week, sorry. And so you can see the content that's on there. So a newsletter automatically populates with up to two interviews, okay, your two most recent interviews that you've done that week, up to three events, Okay, the upcoming events on your site, up to two featured listings, which we talked about earlier. Another reason why you want to add on featured listings, and up to four news articles. Then at the bottom of this, it will have your contact information. Now, you do not have to do anything to have this newsletter sent out. It is sent out to anyone that is subscribed, and it will always have this layout. Now, with that being said, if you've not posted any featured listings and you've not done the interviews, those obviously won't be on that newsletter then, just because there's no content to go onto it. So what we need to do is focus on doing the things you set out to do initially, which is build relationships, do these interviews, and highlight any information for real estate on the site, and it basically is automated from there, okay? Now, you can't change the layout of the newsletter. It's built in this given way, okay? But you can obviously change who sees it. So what we're gonna get onto now is talking about subscribers. So your newsletter is a really great feature which allows people to obviously be sort of brought up to date with things that are going on in your community and what you're up to. And they can actually subscribe to this newsletter themselves. So when someone who is visiting the site for the first time that has not logged in or that's returning to the site that does not have a login, you can see I'm logged out here, Okay, give me the option to log in because I'm logged out. They'll have this area on the site that's available and it says subscribe. They put in their name, their email address, tick that they're not a robot and click sign up. And once they do that, they will start receiving those newsletters every week. Okay, so that's the organic way. That's the easiest way for, uh, at least for yourself, for them to do that. But there are other ways to generate subscribers too. So in addition to them doing it themselves and kind of DIYing it, what you can do is actually invite people. Okay, so if we go back to Judy's site, once you're logged in as the site sponsor, uh, what you'll see here is there's a little tab that says invite people. So if you click on this here, this will give you the option to actually invite people individually via email, invite people using Gmail contacts, or upload a CSV, also known as a comma separated value file, kind of like an Excel sheet, which has three columns, first name, last name, and email address. Now, this would allow you to uh, invite in bulk, like 200 people a day, right? You can do that there, Gmail contacts, you can just invite the contacts in your list, and email is obviously individual. Now with these invitations, they are sent out a templated message that is the same message for everyone. We can't change that just because it's the way the system's built, but it invites them to subscribe to the site, the Iran's newsletter. So if I sent them out from this one here, it'd be inviting them to the Bothell newsletter. If I wanted them to subscribe to a different newsletter, I'd have to go into that one, okay? But with these invitations, they are just that, they are invitations. It is not going to automatically subscribe anyone. It is going to ha say, hey, would you like to be subscribed to this weekly newsletter? And then give them the option to opt in or opt out. So you can definitely do this. Um, I would recommend doing this once you've done a bunch of interviews, right? If you do this right away, there's less content on the site for people to see. So that way it gives them more substance. So put some interviews on there, put some real estate information on there in addition to everything else. And it will look a lot more appealing to someone than if it was just launched, okay? Now, there are some other ways to get subscribers too. I talk about this during the interview focus sessions, but if you are to interview someone and feature them on the site, that will automatically 
subscribe them to that newsletter because it's a feature of being interviewed. So you could invite people for sure. You could have them, you could tell them to go and subscribe themselves. Absolutely. But if you were to interview them, that will automatically sign them up because we're going to create them a user account and sign them up that way. So that is a really useful tool for gaining subscribers that way. But there are some other things you can do, right? Kind of outside the box thoughts for this. Now, what I mean by that is if you were to log out of your site, but then navigate back to it. So go back to uh, the Bothell site, or if you're on your site, you go back to your one, and, but go to it as someone that is logged out. What you can do is actually use the subscribe section during your reach outs with your sphere of influence. Say you're on the phone with someone, you could tell them about this cool site that you've sponsored for the community, what you're doing, and let them know that they have the option to subscribe to this weekly newsletter. So you could say, hey, would you like to sign up? It's got uh, information on events, news, local interviews and features with businesses, as well as real estate information. It's a piece of value that you can provide during your phone calls or emails and things like that. Now, if they want to subscribe, all you need to do is grab their name, which you probably have already, and their email address, which again, you probably have. But if they're giving their consent to that, then fantastic. You can click that I'm not a robot and sign them up. If they ever want to opt out, they can. They just tick on unsubscribe at the bottom of the newsletter and they'll be able to stop receiving that from that point onwards. So that's one way you can do it. But another way you could do it is maybe think about the tools that you're using already. Now, right now with all this COVID-19 stuff, there might be less of this happening in particular areas, but in your area, you may still be doing say open houses or events which allow a certain number of people to come to, that's safe obviously, but you have a sign-up sheet. So say you're doing an open house, you have a sign-up sheet, people arrive, they fill out their contact information, typically when people arrive there. If you're not doing that, that's definitely something to do, have a sign-up sheet. But then have a little tick box on the side saying, uh, would you like to subscribe to a weekly newsletter dedicated to community, or dedicated to this community or the community name? Now, if they were to tick yes, they've probably put their email address in already. So you can just navigate to the subscribe section on your site, fill this information out and sign them up. That way they can opt out at any time if they wish in the future, but you gain another subscriber. So that's kind of another way to kind of think about building your subscription list. But if you ever want to see who is subscribed to your newsletter, it's a really simple process. Okay, what you can do is navigate to your site. Uh, I'll just go into this one here. And once you've logged in, click on the tab that says directory here on the left. This will give you the option to see unclaimed and claimed businesses, which we talk about in the website fundamental session. But it will also give you the option to see subscribers. And this will show you anyone that is currently subscribed to your newsletter. Now, if they were to opt out, they would be removed from this list and it will continually update with anyone that chooses to opt in or chooses to opt out moving forward. You can see the total number of subscribers at the top. So that's a way you can keep track of that. Now, this is a very tangible thing. A lot of people can get quite distracted by the newsletter. Uh, they think about subscribers, 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 and absolutely that is important, but it is not the be all and end all. The biggest piece of value that you can provide to someone is definitely going to be the interview. That is free PR, free marketing, free advertising for that person. So I strongly recommend putting that emphasis on that because I've seen people that can get immobilized by the number of subscribers they have and it actually takes away from their other activities because they're kind of using that as something that they, they, they feel they need to do before they can do other things. So that's just something that I would highlight and make sure that you've got that right focus. Certainly important, but it's not the be all and end all. Wonderful. Now we're going to finish on another topic that's kind of along the same note where people can get quite immobilized by it. And that is analytics. Now on your site, you may have this tab or you may not. The way to get this tab added though, is to simply reach out to our support team and just say, Hey, can you turn on my analytics for my site? And we can turn that on for you. Okay. It's free to turn on, but basically what this tab will do here on the left is show you a detailed breakdown of the number of page views, total users, sessions, and average session time of those people on your site over a given date range. So this is over the last month. 
Now we can go really far back to about, I think it's 365 days. So April 10th, 2019. So we go back over a full year and we can see how many page views have been on the site in that time. You're going to see there's highs and lows, but overall in the last year, there has been 17,821 page views for Lisa's site. She's had about 5,000 users and sessions and average session time is about four minutes. Now, a little bit of background, four minutes is actually a heck of a long time for an average session time. Most sites have somewhere between three to five minutes-ish. Exceptional sites are ones that have maybe five to 10, if not 15 minutes as an average session time. Because a session time is when someone comes onto your site, so they click onto it, up until the point that they leave. So you've got to factor in not just the people that are going on, like yourselves and people in your community, but people that accidentally click on this as well. So there's gonna be half a seconds going in there that kind of mess up that number there. Okay, so that's why when you're thinking about average session time being a few minutes, that's actually quite good. If it's less than a minute, that's definitely something we wanna be working on um, for building this up a little bit. But you can see a breakdown of the page views as well as the most viewed pages. So you can see that this has a home page having the highest view count, 3,100 views for that home page. But then option two and three, or sorry, number two and three here are interviews. These have about 2,300 views uh, between the two of them. Then we've got the interviews tab, real estate information, events, news, uh, the profile page, blogs, interviews and listings, etc. Okay, but if we make a count of the things that actually drive the most traffic, I'm going to highlight how many are interview specific or interview related. One, if we scroll further up, two, three, go further up here, four, further up, five for blogs, keep going, six for interviews, seven for this interview, and eight for this interview. So eight out of 20 pages are specific interviews or interview related. Okay, so almost half of the most visited pages are interview related. So that means put an emphasis on these interviews because that actually is what leads to these large spikes. Because these spikes come from when you share the content online. Okay, you share the content online and you have a surge of traffic. But then what also happens is that when you share these interviews online, they are a fantastic piece of content that ranks really well on Google. So after that initial search, that interview is still drawing people there for when they're searching for businesses. Okay. If I were to search for, and this is actually for Lisa's site, um, Alicia Coling Stylist. Okay. This is the name of a person and their profession. What you can see is that number one on Google, you've got that interview. Now that's not going to happen every single time. That is a topic for another day, SEO, but you can see how if someone's searching for people, professions, sometimes places and business names, they can find these interviews online. They rank very well. So you want to take away from this that, okay, it's not just about the initial surge of views. It's the more interviews that I do, the more content I create could be blogs as well, real estate information the higher chance there is of people finding my site in the future and continually using my site again in the future for that information. Because it's not just about that surge. You want things to grow over time, right? If things blow up, which is, that's lovely, but it's kind of a flash in the pan. You want it to make sure it's sustainable. So with every interview, with all these pieces of content that you're creating, it is that long-term growth that you're really targeting. Cool. So, those are the really the four main topics that I wanted to get into. Real estate information, lead generation buttons in the CRM, newsletter, and analytics. Now, for yourselves, your key takeaways from the session and the things you want to be moving forward with after the session is figuring out, okay, great. What do I want to do now knowing this information? I would recommend reaching out to the support team with a link to your website your, your separate website from Parkbench and saying, hey, I would, would like to upload my IDX or I'm not sure if this is an IDX, can you check that for me, see if this works? And then they'll be able to tell you if that's an option. That's not an option in the, and you're in the United States, upload the list hub option instead. 
okay? That's what I would probably recommend. Now, if you're not happy with the list up option, uh, or if you don't have an IDX or both or whatever it is, you can always add in featured listings. Remember, that is an option that's present for everyone, okay? And our support team can actually help you with that with any information you may need. So make sure to get that done, okay? If you're wanting to have that real estate information on the site. The next thing is to kind of think about inviting people to your newsletter and turning on that analytics tab. Now, I would heavily and strongly recommend that you turn on the analytics tab once you've done a few interviews. Because I've had people be immobilized by these numbers before. I have had people focus so much on the number of views to their sites rather than the number of interviews that they were doing. And it completely defeated the purpose of what they set out to do. They set out to be the go-to person to build relationships, to connect with people in their community. And what they did is they, they sponsored this website and they just watched. And they didn't do anything. You don't want to be in that position. You don't want to be doing that. You don't want to invest your fee into just watching something online. I mean, you can do that with any website. There's cheaper websites out there to do that with. This is about getting out there, building these relationships. Okay. So that's about it for our session today. It's a little bit shorter than some of the other um, fundamental sessions, but that's kind of nice. Um, so feel free to let me know any questions you may have. Otherwise, what I recommend is getting onto those action points. Okay, so reaching out to our support team for anything you need and really get the full functionality of your site up and running.